Hello, and welcome to the second part of my report. This will be about the tools that can be used to assess corporate governance. What is corporate governance assessment? It is a company's assessment of its practices and procedures and a periodic evaluation of corporation, board of directors, and its committees, as well as individual directors. So when we discuss corporate governance assessments, we also talk about board evaluation. And board evaluation refers to measures that aid effectiveness, transparency, and accountability of board members, especially in the aspect of board governance. These are the essential purpose of corporate governance assessment. In general, corporate governance assessments are important for companies to evaluate their historical corporate governance practices against current best practices to enable the company's board to determine and support the company's strategic direction. These types of assessments are beneficial to help a company's improve board and individual director effectiveness to re-establish corporate priorities and goals and to improve general cohesiveness of the board of directors. The OECD or the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is an intergovernmental agency founded in 1961 to stimulate economic progress and world trade. It released good practice guidelines and board evaluation in 2018, which answers the following questions. When should the board be evaluated? What should be evaluated? Who should conduct the evaluation board? And how should the evaluation be reported? The first good practice guidelines answers when should the board be evaluated. For many companies, board assessments are becoming either an annual or biannual exercise. Some companies do this as a matter of practice. Others include board assessments such as a requirement in their charter. But in any case, they should be undertaken regularly with an independent review every two or three years or when there have been substantial changes in the composition of the board or a radical reshaping of the business. It is important to realize that there is no one-size-fits-all blueprint for the evaluation of the board of directors, including the timing of such evaluations. Board requirements and the evaluation needs of the firm are all firm-specific and vary across lifestyle stages, sectors, and cultures. The second good practice guidelines says that the performance and effectiveness of the board can be measured by the following four dimensions. These are the key issues that needed to be central to every evaluation process. The first is the quality of monitoring and risk management role. Second, the quality of strategic and other business-related advice. Third, board dynamics and board members' proactive participation. And fourth, board composition and diversity. A tool to examine how the board operates along these four dimensions is key to board evaluation today. Since this type of evaluation also helps improve the effectiveness of a board, countries are increasingly implementing rules and regulations regarding their use. The third good practice guidelines ask who should conduct the evaluation. This is a list of people who can start and conduct corporate governance assessment. The leader of the evaluation process also needs to manage expectations about the process and potential benefits it may bring. Everyone needs to understand that evaluation is not a panacea to a firm's problems and that that, although important, is only one element of the firm's strategies for developing its operations. Often, a questionnaire with multiple choice and open questions dealing with the issues is sent to each board member with additional questions for committee members and specific questions for the board chairman. Subsequently, individual interviews are conducted by the leader of the board of the evaluation process to allow mem board members to freely express their views. The leader of the board evaluation process then provides a report on an anonymous basis to the board of directors or supervisory board, including an action plan and areas for improvement the potential use and importance of software solutions and applications to enable more effective board evaluation process to manage the extensive data generated by modern board evaluation is another area that needs further study. Here again, it should be noted that it's no one-size-fits-all blueprint for the evaluation process. 
regulators should make it clear that there are different ways to conduct the evaluation process and provide options to companies and boards to assess what works best for them. The fourth good practice guideline answers, how should a board evaluation be disclosed? Board perform better when they receive feedback on what they're doing and what they can do better. In addition, Individual members perform better when they are held accountable for improving their contribution. Personal and confidential inf information should not be publicly disclosed. Yet investors and other stakeholders appear to appreciate hearing about the assessment process. Clearly, they're interested in the why, the what, and the how of evaluations. Regulators must make more effort to support, encourage, persuade boards to recognize the rewards that come from the open disclosure of the evaluation process and the potential rewards to seem clear. At the very least, open communication of evaluation can increase the commitment and engagement of board members to participate in future evaluation process, which in turn improve the functioning and performance of the evaluation of the board. You can evaluate your governance using different methods. First is the face-to-face -face interview. Ask your group members, clients, and stakeholders what they think about the job you're doing, where and how you might do it better. By speaking individually to people and in private, you can ensure that the answers are confidential, which encourages people to be more frank. Second will be surveys. You draw up a simple survey or a list of questions and ask a variety of people to answer it. You can focus on one or several issues and then compare the different answers to the same questions. Are people raising the same issues and concerns? The results will help tell you whether you're on the right track. The third would be group discussions, meetings, and workshops. Bring people together to share their opinions on your governance and your work. You will hear new ideas and get fresh insights. Next is research. You can arrange to have your own research conducted and the results analyzed for you. How do other nations, communities, and organizations fulfill the same function? What solutions have others developed for the same problems and what you can learn from them? Next is data analysis. You can get some hard facts. For example, demographic data about your membership will tell you a lot about the future demands on your governance and services. How many young people are involved in your decision-making process? Have your decisions over the last year been implemented or not? How many members are attending annual general meetings or are involved in selecting or electing your leaders? This idea will give you a better idea of your governance performance. Often people use a combination of methods so they can gather different kinds of information and views. Above all, do not be afraid to ask the hard questions and be honest about answering them. Evaluation generally gives the best results when it is progressively done through ongoing monitoring. That way, it is a part of a cycle of linked stages rather than a one-off snapshot of how things are.